Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the channel again. My Volvo C30, went to drive it the other day and it's been, hasn't been used for a while actually. It was kind of a backup vehicle because my son was using it. The uh, bloody no windscreen washer. So I thought, oh, no water to put the water in, no good. No windscreen washer, I can hear a click click, but the pump has gone. And judging by the availability of this, um, these pumps and the price of them, they are widely replaced, I'd say. And I'll just have a quick look at the pump before I go out there and find out where it is. I know it's located in an awkward position in the, on the car itself, but I bought a Quintin Hazel one, which was about 11 or 12 pounds. Do you think Quintin Hazel's a good brand or not? Anyone got any comments? Um, but they are a big auto factor supplier. I don't know, Tetro Seal Group Limited. But I bought the more expensive one. There's, they're as little as five quid, these things, on the internet. And I thought, well, I'll buy a decent one. And here we have it. So really just a pump in it basically that stuff's in it's got a rubber thingy bob on it that goes into the tank don't know how it's held in and there's two pipes and as I understand it you reverse the um, direction of polarity on these two connections from the 12 volts and if you put it on one way it pumps from in there out one spout to the rear wiper and if you put the polarity the other way it comes out here instead and goes that way up to the uh, windscreen wipers or vice versa but that's it so it's a sealed unit there's nothing serviceable I am going to crack the old one open <coughs> and see what's wrong with it. Now, we'll do a review of that at the end, but a quick video on just where the pump is and how to change it, if it's particularly ish iffy, it might be. I couldn't see anybody changing one on the internet, so it might be useful to some people. But let's get on with it, and uh, let's go out. So the C30's off the ground. It's uh, getting towards the end of January in the UK. Dramatic skyline, clouds, showers of rain, absolutely pissed it down last night. Nothing to do with the video, but interesting background info. So there you can see on the driver's side, well in the UK the driver's side, it's on the right hand side of the vehicle looking from the uh, driver position, is the windscreen washer filler cap. Just there, nestling in this bulkhead grill, ventilation grill, etc. That's your uh, brake master reservoir, presumably on the other side on a continental left hand drive car, I don't know. But the Windscreen washer tank, I understand, is down behind this strut. There's a strut housing goes all the way down the inside of the engine compartment. Again, this is the wing and the headlight. And the tank is in there somewhere. And I understand the windscreen washer motor is somewhere located on that tank. And the only way to get to that, as I understand it, and I haven't seen a diagram of this, is to remove the, uh, the right-hand side, the offside wheel in the UK, this wheel, there's the wing and then go inside and remove that inner wheel lining which is lurking in there okay so i'll take the wheel off it should be no mystery to anyone and um we'll see about getting that lining out shall we right let's go on with it so true to form in english weather it was bright sunshine now it's raining but here's the wheel arch in question and you see you've got a fixing here and then you've got fixings down here fixings here uh, 10 millimeter nylon uh, screw bolt that goes onto a, a coarse thread there. There's one here, and then some more of these uh, fixings down there. So those fixings, which we just need to take out, doesn't appear to be in the top, so you're okay, is the uh, T25 Torx, which is one of these Torx drivers, like that, okay? Just normal T25 Torx is the one that fits. And I'll just whip those out, and I think once they're, once they're removed, I think this wheel arch will come out quite easily because on the top of the wheel arch rim here it's just hooked under the plastic outer part so I don't think we have to take this part off. I could be wrong, I think it's just hooked up underneath it so with a bit of bending and flexing we can get that out I should think and I'll come back to you when I've got the actual wheel arch lining removed, okay? It's very simple to take those bolts out. So sit back and relax and have a guided tour <laughs> of the Volvo C30 2009 wheel arch. There's the disc, these are Brembo's, look, very nice Brembo discs. By the best quality, you won't regret it, they break so well and they are coated as well so they don't rust on the bits that aren't breaking, up here and down there. And there's only been on a few thousand, but the car has been parked for a few months, they'll wear off. Uh, oh, I'm digressing anyway, so inside the wheel arch, um, at the front, under the wing, you've got the power steering pump. Um, quite often the power steering light comes on and it happened to me in a previous car 
car had a service history but it hadn't been filled and it was just empty it leaked a little bit somewhere just weeping over the years and the level had dropped too low so I would advise you if you've just bought one of these from where you got it from is to take the headlight out which is very easy and just check your power steering fluid level otherwise one day you'll find your steering will suddenly get very heavy um, I changed the pump you, this is the same as the V40 and I think perhaps the S60 pump but it was this was like um, about 30 pounds from a, from a, a breaker in Oxford um, that's the that's the accumulator to even out the power, the power, the pressure, I think. And then going forward, you can see there's the cam, the uh, auxiliary belt. Mine looks particularly bad, actually. Look at that. This is supposed to be a fully serviced car. This car has got a huge raft of um, invoices from the Volvo main service dealer. And that has been on there for a long time, that belt. That's not a quick... That's been 60,000, 70,000 miles, I should think. So... That's got to be changed. I've discovered that in time. That's useful. And then um, there was one fixing that went down here underneath this edge. Um, so there was one bolt around the corner under there, which I'd forgotten about. And you can see these are the nuts and bolts that came off with the unit of the uh, car. Nice stainless, actually. And the, there's the two 10 millimeter size uh, plastic nuts. And one of these, this one, was the one that was under the round around the front still the same size been in the weather look it has started to corrode that one slightly but it's got a big spreader washer on it to to go into the wheel arch the wheel arch came out really easy and uh, you can see there's the lug down there that that screw goes into that one there okay so back to the wheel arch and where is this dreaded pump so if we scan up that has the wheel and we're scanning up there you can see there's the first part of the tank. That's the first part of the windscreen washer fluid tank. Then there's a, an umbilical pipe down there. It goes into this. And it goes into this second tank. Here, yeah, this is a tank, this thing. Big rubber paddy thing there, look. Stop it rattling, I presume. Um, and then the, the tank goes up and under. Up and under. Under here. And that's still it there. So it goes all the way up to this point. So I think I'm going to have to loosen these bolts off, these fixing bolts on the tank. There's one, there appears to be one there, and there's one up there as well. I'm going to loosen those off and drop this tank down because all I can really see is a couple of wires. And at the front, I can see the pipe issuing from up there. You can see it. Can you see that? See that pipe coming out down there? This one going off to the <coughs> windscreen washers. So the pump must be up under here somewhere located behind that lot so take all this detritus out that's managed to creep in take these two bolts out I think there's a loom here look I don't know if that's the back of the pump or not we'll find out and yeah just two bolts as I already pointed out so let's get those off and have a look right those two screws holding the tanker out and it's ready to drop down and I just realized actually it's quite heavy because it's full of water and yeah, we should have drained it first, shouldn't we? So I'm just going to give that a quick drainage. Notice that this pipe, sorry, <laughs> this pipe is supposed to be rooted through that channel by the look of it, but it's not. There's a channel there for something to go through. But clearly, probably didn't have anything else. Oh, look, there you go. So there's the water level, but there's the, you can just see the end of that dreaded pump just there. That's the thing we need to change, just in there. So let me drain this tank. I'm guessing... I can probably just pull that pipe out and it'll all run out. So I'm going to pull that pipe out and drain her and then um, pull it out and then show you what to do. But you've probably got it by now anyway. You don't need me to show you, but who knows. Okay, so there was a bit of a deluge. See all the bubbles down there? Still dripping. Um, that pipe, that umbilical pipe, just pulls out really easily actually out of the bottom of this tank. And then when the water was out of there, it was much more manageable. It just kind of dropped down on its own. And <coughs> I'm guessing... This is the connection for the level sensing to say your water washer is getting low. No. Uh, that's a pipe goes up to the washers. There's a clip here, look, which is not on properly. You can see that? It's not actually been put on properly by somebody. And here's our dastardly pump inside there. Has it got a rubber jacket on it? No, it's just the pump. So. I'll just unplug it. So we've got two pipes. We've got the pipes for the front and a pipe for, sorry, pipe for the front windscreen and a pipe for 
Ah, it's not the uh, head, head washers, it's the rear wiper. So if you press, if you get these pipes swapped over, you'll be squirting in your rear rather than squirting in the front, okay? So when you take these off, note whether they go left or right on this end of the pump. This is the pump we're going to pull apart and see what's gone wrong with it, assuming it has failed. Um, that pipe arrangement doesn't look quite correct, does it? It looks like it's been stuffed in there. Maybe it's even been changed before. Uh, I'd say the cum so the cum <clears throat> pump, the pump pulled out easily. It's uh, this rubber thing in here. There's a new one of these. This rubber bit here is also supplied with the new pump. So that bit's not required. You just take that out. Okay. And I think the modus operandi is to put the new rubber one in and then make sure this is slippery. You could put a bit of Vaseline on it if you wanted to, make it slip in nice and easy. Um, oh look, look at that. There is a, what looks like a, is that a filter? Yeah, there's a, actually a filter on there, look. And you can see there's some kind of biofilm has, uh, has built up on that filter. I'm not sure the new one had a filter on it, you know. We'll check when we go indoors. I'll take them both indoors, we'll compare the two. But I'm wondering if it's just that biofilm that's blocking up the film that's causing the problem. It might even, you know, it might not even need a new pump. There's all this stuff on it. Can you see that? Can you see that? Well, it could just be blocked up, couldn't it? It could be biofilm built up inside this tank. That's the trouble, you know. If you don't use the right washer fluid with, if you just put water in in the summer and some normal soap, you get bacterial growth. And when the bacteria start, bacterial, and the bacteria starts to grow, um, you've got a problem. So what I'm going to do is take this whole tank off, actually, disconnect everything, go and wash it out, because I think there is a load of crud in there, and this could be the problem. Although, when I press the wiper request button on the end of my stalk, I, couldn't, I could hear a click, but I couldn't hear any whirring. So maybe it is the pump, but this isn't going to be helping at all. So we'll compare those bits. So I'll take those, and to remove this connector, let's just put that on there. Can you remind me of that? Put it on there. Um, yeah, there's this dog here. Can you see him? That little lever down there. And you just push it in, like that. If I can do this single-handedly. No, I can't. Oh, I can. Here you go. So you just push that part there, where my tip of my thumb is just there, in towards those cables, and then withdraw the connector and it comes off really easily. Then you've just got to pull these two pipes off and remember where they go, okay? So, the one that's on the outside of the pump, towards the wheel, to the outside of the car, goes upwards to this one, so this, this one there, which is, uh, which is fine. They somehow got crossed over, didn't they, during assembly by somebody. Somebody didn't pay attention to what they were doing, did they, boys? Hmm. Uh. Don't know what that means, do you? You got any idea what that means? It says, if I can zoom in there. It says, without headlamp clean, with headlamp clean. Hmm, what that means. It's probably made sense to the Swede who wrote it. Oh yeah, okay, well let's get this um, pump indoors and have a look. Well look, here we've got thing one and thing two. The new and the old. Quentin Hazel in the Volvo, in the Volvo. Right, so it's a, it's a FOMOCO, it's a Ford pump in there. Part number 71-17K624-FE. I'll read that out again, or you can freeze frame it. 1-S71-17K624-FE. And it's also got letters T655C. I'll zoom in a bit, you can have a look. Just in case you want to get an original Ford one instead of a shitty Chinese one. Although they could be Chinese, but they're clearly made at different places. Could be Austrian part. Quentin Hazel probably. So Quentin Hazel, yeah, Quentin Hazel's got the... That's the Quentin Hazel logo look. Quentin Hazel! But it's a cheap Chinese knockoff in it, basically. And there's a couple of differences. Uh, both got white pipe and a black pipe. And we pip and pip and um, yeah, um, but the, the key differences are the connector looks the same. Oh, there's another number up here. Look, FICO Transpar made in China. So this is a Chinese rubbish one as well. 
PA6 GB 25 12 volt. And this one's got nothing on it at all, apart from the Quinn and Hazel. This is going to be sold by everybody, made by somewhere who's knocked it off. And you can see it's a different part. The actual details and mouldings are different. This housing is different. So, yeah, it's just different. Okay. Um, the key thing is this rubber Johnny on the end. Look, we've got a T strainer on one end that was kind of filmed up. And um, I suppose it's do you want to. You have to be careful what you put in your washer tank, don't you? If you put the wrong stuff in, you're looking for trouble. I mean, it's it's a lesson to you to uh, to put the proper washer fluid so you can't get any bacterial growth in there and don't use a watering can and so on and so on and so on so that your water stays clean because if it's not clean, I think there's an input... No, there isn't an input filter at the top. Hmm, so quite often I have that very fine uh, gauze filter you can lift out, but I'm not sure if there is one or not. But you can see it's well gunged up in there. Um... And this one's just got the old rubber rubber seal, which you know isn't as effective. This has got the um, a wedge seal and then some ring seals, and this has just got a couple of ring seals. So I think I'm going to clean for my money. That still feels okay and flexible. I'll clean that and put that back on. And the other, just what's wrong with it, I suppose. I've got 12 volts on these two connectors, putting out 12 volts, two amps. And if I put the 12 volts on the on the old Ford part made in China, Chinese Ford, I just get a click and I'm getting uh, 1.8 amps going through and now it's really happening. She's seized up solid boys. So we'll take her apart in a bit and see what's wrong with her. And if I just repeat that on this one, you should get a whiz. I'm not going to run it for long because so it will damage the pump. Yeah. Yeah. So, sounds rough though, really. Doesn't sound like a precision piece of equipment, but it's just for a car. So I'm going to stuff this back in. I'm going to wash the tank out first, put this back in, and then I'll come back and we'll chop this open and see just what's happened. Obviously we know what's happened really, but there's something, something stuck in there. It can't be stuck in there. Nothing big enough could get through that grill, could it, to that vor that vores. Hello, I'm leaking from my end. Yeah, okay, so that, take that off there, keep that in the house, and we'll put this one on there, like that, with a bit of Vaseline, and uh, I'll wash it all out and put it back together. So, <coughs> I'm not going to show you the reassembly, because it is pretty simple, and then really, if you can't put it back together after the uh, after taking it apart, then perhaps it's best to get someone else to do it, alright? But I hope you found that interesting, but back in a minute, and we'll just... We'll get the um, Dremel out on this bugger and see what's gone wrong with her. Can you guess? We'll see. All right, back soon. So, <coughs> here's the old one. I had a go at her, look. I've sliced around here with the, the Dremel. <coughs> it's, um, I think it's glass reinforced nylon or ABS or something, but it's, um, yeah, it's like kind of melts. It took about 10 minutes to get it off, but there you go. So I think it's ready to part company, so should we just pull it off? Not oh, too bad in there, does it? There's a hint of rust here, look. Rust and rust. So obviously some water's got in somewhere. You can see more rust down here. There's the back of the motor and the capacitor across it and the two contacts. So that seems to be inside and that's probably just the outer cam of the motor. I don't know if it'll pull out. Should we try it? Let's get the pliers on her and give her a tug. Stranger things have happened. But not today. That's in there solid. Very solid indeed. Ooh, that's falling out of it. Actually, flakes of rust by the look of it. So you see if we can get her open rather than waste any time. Got an idea. I wonder if she'll peel like a can of sardines. Whoa, it's tough stuff, you know. That is definitely GRP. Look at the strength of that. I really am giving that some grief. Oh, let's try it this way then. Bit of the T 
tin off the motor. Come on. Oh, pro 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 progress. That's the that's the end cap that's been glued on to the. And here's the glue. Still flexible after you all these years. Some sort of polyurethane glue, perhaps. Will it come out now? No. More peeling required. Oh, look at the rust. Look at the rust. Time for a bit of drumbling. Mom reveal, yeah, secrets. Four sets. Poof. Tastes a bit funny that plastic. Right, here we go. Here we go. And we're going to find out clearly the rust. I'm just curious to see what kind of seal it is, that's all. But Presumably she'll come out. That's amazing. It's carried on working for so long because it's like rotten as a peach inside there. I wonder if um, the washing liquid stuff you put in the concentrate for the screen washers actually has any effect on, uh, on motor life. Yeah, it's just... It's just gone rusty look, got a, sh got a flat on the end of the shaft that drives the impeller that turns the water that makes it go up the thing, and that is stiff. What if I loosen it off? I can see inside there as well. So that's your problem, I could lubricate it and make it look work, but I think that's for a different day, don't you? Nice motor though. So that goes into that bit down there. <clears throat> this end cap, is that the seal do you think? There is a kind of something here, a pump body. Oh yes, there's a rubber body coming out. She comes. So the shaft goes through the eel, as you can see. That must be the seal. Yeah, and that's the seal between one side and the impeller. So that's the back where the impeller is running inside the pump. Yeah, I don't think it's been leaking along around the periphery or the the outside um, circumference because there's no witness sign of any liquid getting through on the seal. Look, so it's a shaft seal that's gone, definitely. Put a bit of washing up liquid in your washer bottle to... Oh yeah, look look at that. It's like very loose, very unsatisfactory. Yeah, it's just been leaking. There's no... She's been Roger boys. In fact, you can see there's a all this detritus in here as well, where it's been running down. Because we're in the in the machine, in the car, it's mounted like that, wasn't it? Was it? The pipe's going up. Yeah, so it plugged in. And that plugged in like that, didn't it? So it was downwards, so yeah, that goes the water pressure from the reservoir and the pump would make it go up. So that's what's wrong with it. She's leaked on her seal. It's a shame. And look, this is the impeller. It's a two I've just got a stump. Yeah, look, action photo. It was a good disc. 
getting a bit too excited there I was by the prospect of getting this thing apart. So I think there might be a spring in there because I think it felt like it was cutting through some metal of some kind. And there must be just a one-way valve in this thing to... What do you think is between there and there? It changes direction by... Yeah, because we've got... Where's that rotor gone? We've got two little rotors. We've got a smaller rotor and a bigger rotor. I wonder if that's a mechanism to stop cavitation or something like that. Because they both blow, blow into the same chamber. Or do they? Yeah, they do, because there's the outlets there. The outlet thing sits in there like that. In the ewe. And then... Uh, shoves the water out, impels in that direction or that direction. You can see how asymmetric it is. It's interesting, isn't it? I wonder what it does. I wonder how it works. So what's in here then? Is that just a... Presumably, they're not connected at all. Maybe that's just a holder for that one. So look, hole in hand. One for the team. Uh, yeah, so inside this thing, the fluid is delivered through here or here, depending on which way the motor's going. And then all that's in there seem, appears to be either a seal, it looks more like a one-way valve that can shut off. What does it do? Oh, I see. I see. It's an anti-dribble valve, isn't it? So it, the pump will, will generate some pressure. Um, or could it suck some air in? It could suck air in, couldn't it, from that side if it's going the other way around. Imagine that going around in there the wrong way around. Then it could actually create a negative pressure. So what this does, this um, when the pressure is on this side, it pushes it and seals that pipe, which seals the pipe from outside off to stop you sucking the water back down and air into your, your, your water stream. And likewise, when it's pressurized on this side which is presumably the rear washer then the diaphragms push this way to stop air being sucked down the uh, windscreen washers that's why that's for that's why it's a clever little design isn't it so making my Range Rover's got two pumps my, one for the headlights actually three pumps one for the headlights one for the windscreen washers and one for the rear washer yeah so it's a way of sealing off the chamber and stopping you sucking air back into the pipe back into the here because it's going the wrong way instead of forcing it down it's pulling it um, and then mixing bubbles in with your with your washer fluid or just capitating when enough air comes in so yeah crappy seal gone on the on the uh, on the old rubber bit actually on the on the seal so there, there it is um, I should put it back together not um, I hope you enjoyed that so that's the uh, C30 windscreen washer pump replacement and investigation and there she blows all rusty crappy seal uh, 10 years old the car if you like the video then um, subscribe down there for me thank you